Hey everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to preview Jupiter's upcoming conjunction with Neptune, because why not? It's a huge transit, and uh, we've talked about it a bunch, previewing it at the beginning of the year, and we're getting closer. It's about a month away now, a little bit less than a month away, and I think it'd be good a good time to just kind of preview some of the themes. We're going to be doing some deeper dives with Jupiter-Neptune in April, of course, but... Um, yeah, I feel like today is it would be a good day to kind of refresh on the transit that's coming because everything right now is sort of building toward it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do uh, for today. So first of all, we're going to put up the real time clock and take a look at the transit and uh, just refresh on where it is, how long it lasts, when exactly it will, the two planets will come together. And then we'll break down. I've got a list of themes we're going to talk about and one interesting historical fact. So um, remember that uh, I mentioned this maybe last week, but the first week of April, my new classes for the spring, my new first year program, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, will be open for registration. The first week of April, we will be running a sale. We had quite a few people contact us after the Kickstarter was over asking if they could still receive the discount on my spring courses because they whatever reason they didn't have the funds available or whatever to take part in that um, sale. So we, for the first week of April, we're going to rerun all of the Kickstarter rates for just one week. Um, and so you'll be able to save if you want, you can bundle some packages of programs together as well. So stay tuned for that the first week of April. Okay. <clears throat> Let's put up the real time clock and take a look. So here you can see, that Jupiter is within about six degrees, closing in on five degrees from Neptune right now. And you're going to see Jupiter coming, th whoops, coming through that conjunction in the weeks ahead. So, you know what? I'm just going to, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to just change the wheel style. And we're just going to put Pisces on the ascendant. Okay, so make it easier. So here's the two planets, Jupiter and Neptune, coming together in the sky right now. And if we push this forward a little bit, you'll see the two of them coming through the conjunction uh, by about the middle of April. So this is March 31st, they're within two degrees. April 7th, they're within one degree. Step this forward a couple more degrees. You get them on the same degree starting on April 8th. And then they come together specifically on April 12th. And then they travel on that 24th degree together all the way up until about April 17th. So really between the end of March and late, you know, mid to late April, you have a conjunction between these two planets. Anytime they're within three degrees, really, they're active. So if we stretch that out a little bit, you'll see the two planets are sort of within three degrees all the way till the end of April. Not only that, but at the end of April, you're also getting an exalted Venus coming through the conjunction with both Neptune and Jupiter. So April is the month. Um, that is the month when we're going to see this super powerful conjunction between these two planets. All right. One of the things that's pretty cool about that is that at the very end of April, right as Venus is perfecting its conjunction with Neptune and Jupiter, we're also going to have a solar eclipse in Taurus, which is a solar eclipse in Taurus alongside of Uranus or very closely conjoined that solar eclipse is um, with Uranus and Taurus. So um, <clears throat> really powerful astrological energies coming through in uh, the month of April. So one of the things that I thought you guys would find interesting, I didn't have a ton of time to do this yet. I just started gathering some historical research um, surrounding Jupiter-Neptune uh, transits. And um, people have been asking me a lot about current events and if I see anything that's interesting. This is certainly not a prediction, um, but it is something to note, which is that the last time in... Um, 1854, that Jupiter and Neptune came together in Pisces, which is quite, quite some time ago. Um, 
me just make sure I've got that. Let me just go back to my, um, I'm just looking at making sure I got my date right before I open my mouth again. <laughs> just double checking it. 1854. Let's see. Yeah, so is it, let me see here. I just look at my notes. Yeah, I knew I shouldn't have opened my mouth. It's 1856, but I still have the same, I, I have the correct information. I just stated the wrong year. It's, it was 1856. The two planets, Jupiter and Neptune came together in Pisces. And what's really interesting about that um, time is that right as they were conjoining, the Treaty of Paris was signed, which effectively ended the Crimean War, which was, I know nothing about this. This was a military conflict fought between 1853 and 56, in which uh, Russia was at war with an alliance between France, the Ottoman Empire, and looks like the United Kingdom, and Sardinia, maybe. And the immediate cause of the, of the war involved the rights of Christian minorities in Palestine. <clears throat> so there seems to have, uh, I don't, I'm like historically ignorant about this war or this piece of history. So please forgive me. But um, what I think is interesting here is that there was a pretty like large scale war at the time uh, seems to have involved Russia and there was an end to that military conflict. So if people are hoping for peace or a peaceful end to the conflict with Russia right now, uh, everyone's been asking me, do you see an end in sight? Do you see what might happen? And I've really refrained from saying anything um, because I don't know. And I don't, you know, I don't want to insert my stupid opinion. <laughs> you know, I mean, I could, could make something up and look at the astrology and try to look for something, you know, that looks hopeful. If I were to pick anything, it would probably be a Jupiter Neptune conjunction because that conjunction to me is very hopeful and uplifting. Uh, it often the combination speaks to mercy and grace and tolerance, but it, it also speaks to, um, the potential for, um, mercy or for there to be like a, a very forgiving and uplifting and hopeful or redeeming quality. So, you know, that quality could be in the air and could be speaking to things that, I mean, let me tell you, there's, that's not the only thing historically that coincides with Jupiter-Neptune conjunctions. There's a lot of other themes that I'll be bringing up in April that, you know, are not as necessarily, are not as hopeful per se. So, um, but that would be one positive thing that I found while digging through the historical conjunctions of Jupiter and Neptune, especially in the same sign of Pisces, that there was an actual, uh, right at the time of the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, back in 1856, there was a sort of peaceful end or resolution to a war involving Russia at that time. So go figure. But um, yeah, I don't want to get everyone's hopes up who are, you know, people who are really hoping for peace, obviously, peaceful outcome. Um, I think probably everyone is. But other things that come up during Jupiter-Neptune conjunctions, oppositions, squares in general, but especially when Jupiter is in a water sign. Water events, or when Jupiter and Neptune are both in water sign like this, or when Neptune's in Pisces or Cancer or Scorpio, one of the things that I've uh, found both historically and obviously through the Jupiter-Neptune um, pairing in Pisces are major water events. Now this could be something like, oh, my basement flooded, or it could be something involving travel by water. Historically, there's a lot of interesting things that happen with say the laws governing seafaring and um, uh, even how warfare is conducted along on, on the open ocean and stuff like that. Just really interesting themes around water. Um, there was, I found one uh, instance of a, not a tsunami that killed a lot of people, but one of the biggest, I think it was largest recorded tsunamis around a Jupiter-Neptune um, transit previously. So there's, there's the, the potential for overwhelming surges of literal water, <laughs> you know, like Jupiter makes things big and Neptune makes them watery and oceanic. So you kind of have the huge themes of water involved. 
And that's not always necessarily a good thing, the theme of flooding or being overwhelmed. Uh, but that could also be the being flooded by grace, by mercy, by hope, by forgiveness, all Jupiter, like uplifting Jupiter themes and the emotional uplift of Jupiter Neptune can be flooded by grace, flooded by mercy, flooded by redemption. Let me tell you a story. This past week, I had a client talk to me about something that's been happening. They had been thinking of um, potentially having an inappropriate relationship uh, outside of a committed relationship. And um, and I have permission to share this, by the way, <clears throat> in you know keeping it kind of anonymous here. And every time, this is just recently, every time that they went to try to consummate this affair, uh, something like miraculous intervened. A cell phone died and like would not, they plugged it in and it like wasn't charging. And so they missed an opportunity. Um, and there was another instance where um, they were chatting with someone and like their internet went down at their home. And it was just like story after story. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of fabricating some of the details here because I'm, I'm protecting the anonymity of this person. But basically it was things like that, that were just absolutely incredible, couldn't make it up right at the moment where consummation of something they knew they shouldn't do was about to happen. Something would intervene to keep them from doing it. And they were like, is that something astrological? I was like, yes. That is very Jupiter Neptune. I have seen this so many times throughout my career when Jupiter is transiting Neptune in a person's natal chart or Neptune is transiting Jupiter in a person's natal chart um, that there are these weird like miraculous interventions that save you from the worst or that redeem you from the worst possible outcome, which is why if I were to say there's any possibility that maybe things end more favorably with regard to the war that's going on right now, Jupiter Neptune would give me a little hope about that. Uh, that there could be some kind of peaceful resolution reached or a turning point that offered some feeling of hope or, or redemption. So um, <clears throat> that being said, though, uh, you know, history is full of not so great or easy things that have also happened during Jupiter Neptune configurations. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into some of those today, because I'm saving those for uh, some of the historical treatment that I'll do in April. But, you know, just to Brace everyone. There's no planetary configuration that is purely good or bad, right? There's always a mix because the planets have to signify, you know, multiple, multiple, unbelievably multiple fields of karma that are unfolding and intertwined in deeply mysterious ways. And so what we, the best way to extract meaning from an astrological transit is to try to understand the archetypal heart of the planets involved and the themes that tend to come about and then understanding how those same themes could express themselves in subjectively more pleasing or pos, quote unquote positive ways or negative ways. So, um, but to me, uh, this this the thing I uh, flooded by something, overwhelmed by something, uh, dramatic turning points with an uplifting theme, uh, the feeling of being saved from the worst or being uplifted. Sometimes that in in Pisces too, like. You wouldn't believe how many times um, as soon as Jupiter entered Pisces last summer for even just a little bit, I heard stories about people who had troubles getting pregnant who suddenly got pregnant. I even have a close friend who was having trouble getting pregnant and then just recently got pregnant as Jupiter is in Pisces making some aspects in their chart. It's because Jupiter is empowered. Jupiter is a planet that was related to fertility and not just fertility in terms of creating children, but in terms of making money or in terms of having anything that you want to see grow or flourish or develop, do so. So this theme of um, things expanding and growing, there's a fertile energy. Expansion of territory, that's a theme historically I'll mention as well. Not always good. One of the things that Jupiter Neptune wants to do is make something, I think the word is homogenous, but it's the, you know, like when, when I was a kid, there's this thing that happened. There's this thing that happened that I'll never forget, which is we had this big, huge backyard that was shared by a bunch of houses. And it was just kind of an open, I think it was owned by the city. Maybe it was like a big open field, but it was kind of down. It was like, kind of like a bowl. And um, we used to play, you know, baseball in it and dodgeball or whatever. We used to go down there and play all the time. Well, it was filled with snow and the snow, very similar to what it did this past week, suddenly it hit 
50, 60 degrees for a couple of days and everything melted instantly. So this valley that we used to play in was completely flooded with water. And we actually took our canoe out in it. <laughs> My dad busted out the canoe and we got the canoe and pushed it back into the backyard. And I, I'll just never forget that. It was one of my favorite childhood memories ever because it was so random. <clears throat> but I remember looking at it and being, I remember like all of the, there were like in that field, there were all these different places that we had that represented the baseball field. Like, you know, this, this is home base and this is, you know, and we made them up and they were kind of worn down, you know, because of trampling over them and stuff. And as we were going over it in the canoe, because it's probably three feet deep, two feet, you know, it was not, it was deep enough where you could take the canoe out. We're going over it and I'm looking, I'm saying, oh, look, that's where home was and that's where this was. And, but it was all just flooded. And it gave me this weird perception of it all being one thing. It's all just one thing. And for, for me, when it was, you know, when it was dry, it was, it had parts. It had all individual parts. But one thing that Jupiter Neptune can do in its flooding is eliminate distinctions, bring everything together into one sort of unified whole. Well, that's, you know, there's a long history of that not necessarily being a great thing when you think about all the colonialism and expansion of territory and this is ours. And there's historically, there's a number of <clears throat> Jupiter Neptune transits that involved expansions of territory that also eliminated cultural diversity and differences and people and, and races and things like that. Not surprisingly, <clears throat> a number of modern archetypal astrologers have written about Neptune in association with things like the Holocaust, where there's genocide or there's the Rwandan civil war. Uh, I don't even know if it was, if it's considered the Rwandan genocide. I don't think it was a civil war, was it? Or was it, it was between the Hutus and the Tutsi, I can't remember who, but at any rate, there was a conflict and it led to a massive genocide in Rwanda. I think it was in the 1990s. You guys probably remember this. Someone knows it better than I do. So maybe post it in the comment section, but Neptune often configured strongly in such moments. Why? It's not because Neptune is just bad. It's because there tends to be an elimination of diversity toward the favoring of oneness or something sort of singular. Ironically, even people who are, you know, like moving, like, let's say we're trying to move towards something more peaceful, or even like in the history of this country, a lot of people would say that the, you know, expansion of America was about the expansion of a, a form of government that was a good thing that was, you know, good for many people. And we obviously are the recipients of that. At the same time, that, that flourishing of this democratic system, like, wiped out and in, like indigenous people, you know, so anytime Neptune is around, you always have the potential for the flooding that eliminates diversity or that wants to almost um, <clears throat> make everything just one thing. That's maybe one of the shadows of Neptune in general. That's one of the shadows of the new age movement that I've always, it's always sort of driven me nuts is there's so much emphasis on oneness that sometimes we Forget that the history of religion, for example, although there's many perennial themes that can bring unity behind or within all religions, there's also so many interesting distinctions that set different religions and traditions and cultures apart. And those distinctions, if not celebrated, can't be preserved. They can't, uh, they, you know, it's like, I remember, um, I remember, you know, I had, I was with, we had a wedding can I talk? We, we had a wedding that we went to in Disney World. And we ended up, I ended up going to Epcot with my daughter. And I think my, my sister was along. And um, I think I'm getting this story mixed up. But, but anyway, I was there with my sister and my daughter, Virginia. And we went to Epcot for a day. <clears throat> and we walked around. And one of the interesting things about Epcot, if you've ever been there, was that there's um, different like cities in or um, countries that you can go through. Like here's Japan and all of their their food, and here's Italy and all of their food, and it, and it was it's kind of like that. And I I think I was to Epcot once when I was a little boy, so I hadn't remembered any of this. But what I I noticed about this that my daughter actually mentioned we were going from country to country, and she goes, yeah, but th this isn't the real countries. <laughs> like she's like five you know and she like or I mean she was even four at the time and she was like but these aren't the real countries are they 
<clears throat> there was something she noticed about it that didn't feel real. She was noticing, I think that there was something about the whole thing that just looked like six flags. You know, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was cultural, ethnic, world celebration of diversity, kinda. <laughs> you know, kinda, because it was united by consumerism and commercialism and other things that she was picking up on and being like, yeah, but this isn't the real thing. And she's really, you know, it's really smart for like a four-year-old girl. And I think my, uh, my sister and I like had a laugh at it. Um, so you have to be careful with Jupiter Neptune because Jupiter Neptune is also about this kind of this idea of making things more unified, but sometimes they will be in the unification. There will be uh, things that are doing the unifying that are subtle and pervasive and not necessarily good. Like we can delude ourselves into thinking that something is, um, <clears throat> some big, grand, beautiful, unifying thing is, is good. And maybe in the process, there's underlying motivations that are wiping out important diversities or differences or whatever. So I hope I'm making this idea clear enough for you guys to grok. The feeling of romantic longing, desire, um, and sea changes, especially in Pisces, sea changes being a kind of a good pun, I guess, but it's a double-bodied sign. So this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction can also just bring about a very positive sense of changing our focus, changing our paradigm, uh, changing our allegiances or groups of people, any kind of sea change professionally or personally or spiritually, it, it, there's this transition going on and it's created because of some hopeful, uplifting or um, inspiring kind of event or vision or something like that. Pretty common for Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces from what I've seen in just the past year um, from clients. As soon as Jupiter enters Pisces and the two planets are co-present, you can see these kinds of things happening. You want to look to the whole sign house of Pisces, which I'll be doing in my horoscope of the month for uh, April. In fact, that'll probably be the main transit uh, I'll be looking at for that month because uh, we will be, uh, very briefly, we're going to be on vacation with my mom celebrating her retirement, which to me is interesting. It's interesting that we will be um, near water and the ocean uh, with my mom, you know, celebrating her long career as a nurse um, as Jupiter's conjoined with Neptune. It feels like a very like uplifting being near water and so forth. So um, at any rate, but because I'll be gone for that, my horoscopes for April will probably be a little bit shorter, but they'll be very focused on that Jupiter Neptune transit. Uh, at the just at the beginning of the month there. Anyway, um, I'm nice and rambly today. <clears throat> I hope this has been a, just a fun little preview for you guys today. This is what I've got. I'd love to hear your stories. If you have any to share, use the hashtag grabbed, put Jupiter and Neptune into the uh, comment section and tell us your story. What have you noticed? Uh, what have you seen from this transit? If you have it natally, tell us a story about natal configuration of Jupiter and Neptune. Um, my daughter was born with Jupiter and Neptune, by the way, and um, she said to me just recently, she was, she was born with the two planets in an opposition to one another, and she just said to me, um, Dad, do you think it's bad that I believe in things that don't exist? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, like a Pegasus. And I said, well, maybe they just exist in a different way. And she thought about it, and she said, like maybe like in a different world. And I said, yeah, like maybe, maybe the pe 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 Pegasus is real, but it's just not in this world. Oh, okay. Like she could, in, no problem, no problem. Like, yeah, that makes sense. And that was how we solved, is it okay that I believe in things that don't exist? So uh, the magic and the otherworldly quality of Jupiter and Neptune uh, the imaginative dimension, the romantic dimension, those are the things that I'm most excited about for this transit. But I'm getting stoked for it, just like I'm getting stoked to take my first vacation since last July. So this should be, uh, should be fun to celebrate my mom's retirement. Um, speaking of Jupiter, Neptune, um, I'll also say that the um, <clears throat> prob probably uh, the likelihood of there being like um, 
if there were to be any event that would like swamp my vacation that would still make me happy it would be like tropical rains or something like that like that would <laughs> like i could deal with being on vacation but getting like lots of rain i'm just i'm just hoping i don't get the uh typhoon or something so anyway okay hope you guys are having a good one we'll talk to you guys again tomorrow take it easy everyone bye